to news out of Washington, where a whistleblower has stepped forward to make bombshell claims that the Department of Justice is protecting what is called a, quote, high-profile controversial subject since early 2020, unquote. Now, according to a letter from the whistleblower's lawyer, this individual, who has been described in media reports as a decorated supervisory IRS agent familiar with complex tax fraud matters, has information that could, quote, contradict sworn testimony by a senior political appointee, involve failure to mitigate clear conflicts of interest in the ultimate disposition of a case, and detail examples of preferential treatment and politics improperly infecting decisions and protocols that would normally be followed if the subject were not politically connected." Unquote. Big stuff, big allegations. Now, you don't have to be Sherlock Holmes to figure out who the special person of interest in all of this is. Everyone knows it's Hunter Biden, son of U.S. President Joe Biden. But slightly greater mystery surrounds who the senior political appointee covering for him might be. However, speculation is rife that that senior appointee is none other than Joe Biden's attorney general, chief law officer of the land, Merrick Garland. Now, earlier this year, Garland pledged before Congress that U.S. attorneys investigating Hunter Biden would be given free reign and that there would be no interference from his office. Have a look. The U.S. attorney in Delaware has been uh, advised that he has full authority uh, to, to make those kind of uh, referrals that you're talking about or to bring cases in other jurisdictions if he feels it's necessary. And I will assure that if he does, uh, he will be able to do that. Has the Delaware U.S. attorney sought permission from uh, uh, permission of another U.S. attorney's office, such as in the District of Columbia or in California, to bring charges? If so, was it denied? So I, I don't know the answer to that. I do, uh, and I don't want to get into the internal elements of decision making by the U.S. attorney. But he has been advised that uh, he is not to be denied uh, anything that he needs. And uh, if that were to happen, um, it should uh, ascend through the department's ranks. And I have not heard anything. Uh, from that office to suggest uh, that uh, they are not able to do everything that the U.S. attorney wants to do. Well, we're not in Maury Povich lie detector territory yet, but honestly, would you honestly be surprised if that turned out to be a bit of an untruth? John Solomon at the Just the News website has dug deeper. Now, he reports that the disclosures are focused primarily on improper politicization of the case at the Justice Department and FBI headquarters rather than at the IRS or Treasury Department. Specifically, he goes on to say, the agent has provided evidence that at least two Biden DOJ, that's the Department of Justice political appointees in U.S. attorney's offices, have declined declined to seek a tax indictment against Hunter Biden despite career investigators' recommendations to do so and the blessing of career prosecutors in the Justice Department tax division, unquote. In other words, Biden's appointees have been protecting Biden's son. This is, if it is proven, the stuff of corrupt third world nations and the last days of Rome. Yet the scary thing is this, again, if it is proven, this sort of corruption has not provoked howls of outrage of the sort that, say, brought down Richard Nixon, or we, which were whipped up by the false Trump is a Russian agent narrative that was pushed by the left back when he was president. But is any of this surprising? Well, sadly, I've got to say no, because frankly, I think at this point, the Democrats know how much they can get away with, and they are laughing at the normal American people and the rest of the world. They have taken the whole concept of one rule for me and another for thee, which of course was once considered the lowest form of hypocrisy, and they've elevated it to high art. The new rule of American politics and the American system now seems to be not one nation under God, and we won't even think about mentioning him these days unless it is to say that Jesus would really have loved a good drag queen story time, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. No, now it's one rule for the left and one for everyone else.
Literally everything is politicized and how it is treated, how any event is treated, how it is covered depends on whether it serves the quote unquote narrative. Remember that horrible school shooting in Nashville the other week committed by a transgender shooter? Well, in the wake of that, there was a huge protest, none dare call it an insurrection, at the Tennessee State Capitol. Democrats protesting for gun rights and trans rights and the like. They became the heroes. And the victims of the shooter? Forgotten. Here's White House spokeswoman Karine Jean-Pierre. So Monday, you're going to have three of the lawmakers who protested after Peace, peacefully protested who peacefully protested after the nashville covenant school shooting have any of the victims or the victims families been invited to the white house i don't have anything to, to read out to you about any invite why i just don't have anything at this time to read out to you at any invite what i can say to you right now is that the president is focused on getting things done that's right. I mean, the victims went to a Christian school, so forget them. You know, the right-wingers, deplorables. Then there's John Fetterman, remember, the guy who the Democrats put in to win Pennsylvania for a Senate seat, narrowly beating Mehmet Oz. You know, the guy who sadly suffered a stroke before the race and demonstrated real cognitive difficulties on the campaign trail. Well, he's back on Capitol Hill after a two-month hospitalization. And, well... Everything's fine, as you can see by his performance chairing a Senate subcommittee. And I will work in this farm bill to modernize SNAP to work to recipients in the 21st century. I look forward to from hearing from you, your witness on this nutrition, for assistance on the farm bill. And I will now turn to Senator Braun for any opening comments that he would like to make. Again, I feel bad for the guy. I hope he makes a full recovery. But I also feel bad for his constituents who were told that to ask any questions about his fitness to serve was to be an ableist bigot or something like that. And with all these disparate stories, Biden appointees covering up for Biden appoint for Biden corruption, school shooting victims sacrificed a second time on the altar of the narrative, John Fetterman paraded by the Democrats as if daring people to say something. The message is the same. They take everyone else for fools, but you know what? There's an election next year. Let's see how that goes for them, eh?